So the new Minotaurum Field Manual Mark II is out. It's free to download and Necron's got some good points drops. It's coming right up. Necrons! Nick speaking and welcome to this video. Right today we are looking at the new points for Necrons. Exciting times. Let's have a look at them and see how it's going to affect our armies. Okay, so first of all, it's the HQ choices, and I'm going to be referencing my top Necron unit videos in this video. So if you haven't seen that playlist, definitely go and check it out. It's linked in the description below for you to find. And first up, we've got Anrakur the Traveller, which I actually placed fairly high in that top list, mainly because he's got the My Will Be Done ability, and he can give you plus one to attacks characteristics of Necron core units and of course we've got a lot of good core units now so Anrika was already very good but now he's come down to 130 points. So a 10 point drop, it's not huge because 130 points is still a reasonable amount of points however he's a good unit and the fact that he's got reduced has to be a plus point. Now talking of 10 point reductions the Catacomb Command Barge came down 10 points as well and I did rank the command barge uh, in the top three of my videos. I'm not gonna spoil the order in case you haven't seen those videos, but yeah, it was in the top three. The command barge, an awesome unit. My will be done, lots of speed, potentially the place to put your relic, the Voltic staff, and of course you've got the underslung gun as well. So 10 points less, I'm liking that. We also had a five points drop on another one of my units in the top three, the Chronomancer. I think we all love the Chronomancer, giving a 5 plus invulnerable save to a unit and also allowing them to reroll the charge rolls. Chronomancer, less in points, it has to be good. Okay, so next is the Luminor Zerus. He's come down 15 points, 145 points now. Now, Illuminor was ruled out of my top HQ choices. He's got some cool stuff about him, but the fact that he doesn't have an invulnerable save and at the time the Technomancer was the same cost to have two Technomancers as one Illuminor where the Technomancers were the better choice. Uh, so has that changed? Well we're going to have to look at the Technomancer in a minute and when we do I think you can easily tell that Illuminor actually has probably got worse even though he's had a points reduction. Now the Technomancer has come down five points to 70 points the Canoptic node is still 10 points. However, they don't list the Canoptic cloak. A mistake, maybe, or maybe it's free now, so you don't have to pay for the Canoptic cloak, which means it's actually come down 10 points. So two Technomancers is now 140 points with the cloak, and Illuminor is 145, so it's actually cheaper to take two Technomancers. So Technomancers, again, as they always have been, very good, definitely a winner out of these points drops. Right back to the named characters, and we've got Imitek the Stormlord, who's come down 15 points also, 130 points. Now Imitek, even though he's in the Sotek dynasty, not necessarily the greatest dynasty in the world, he does offer us an extra two CPs when we take him. So now at 130 points, he potentially might be more considerable if you are taking the Sotek Dynasty. And to be honest with you, he is one of my favorite characters as a model. In the old days, I used to love playing him. He was in most of my lists uh, when Sotek were really good. So Imitate the Stormlord, 130 points, a good move. All right, next it's the Locust Lord, and he's come down five points base and you don't have to pay for the uh, war side now. So effectively it would be 10 points at reduction. Of course, the phylactery and the resurrection orbs have stayed the same. So the Locust Lords come down to 100 points now with the war side. Don't think it's a big enough points drop for us to be taking him, uh, but it's just nice to see him come down in points. All right, next it's the Humble Lord. Now the Lord has come down to 65 points. He was 70. Not only that, but his Resurrection Orb has come down in points to 25 points from 30 and he gets his War Cypher free. 
So this guy here now at 90 points with the Resurrection Orb potentially could do some work in your lists. However, of course, you don't get my will be done with him, but still, definitely a consideration. Both Nemesaur and Oricon came down 10 points each, so 125 points for Nemesaur and 100 points for Oricon. Points reduction is very useful. Our named characters might see some more table time. Obviously, they come automatically with uh, their relic, so you don't have to pay for relics when you take them. They've got a beefed up uh, item. So, always good to see points reductions on the characters. Okay, so next it's the Overlord, 90 points base, and previously it was 95 points. But again, we've got other changes. So the Resurrection Orb to 25 points. Why isn't the Resurrection Orb on the Locust Lord 25 points as well? Why 30 points? That is a bit odd. The Void Scythe has come down to 10 points as opposed to 15. Now the War Scythe and the Tachyon Arrow, which used to be 5 points each, are no longer listed, so if you take those options, you don't have to pay for them. That's pretty useful. I don't know you'll be taking a Tachyon Arrow, but certainly a War Scythe. So the Overlord, down in points, it has to be good. Right, the Plasmancer, which I surprised a lot of you in my top HQ uh, unit choices, coming down to 65 points from 70 points. I'm really happy with that, a great drop. And for 65 points, he's pretty good. The Psychomancer, the worst Mancer that we have, coming down also five points to 65 points. The Royal Warden has also come down to 70 points from 75, a nice reduction. However, the Scorpec Lord, arguably the character which really did need a points reduction, has stayed the same, 130 points, no change for him. Okay, so the final two characters are both named characters. We've got Trazin the Infinite and Vargard Obran, both coming down 10 points to 90 points each. I don't really play Vargard, I've had no reason to play him. However, Trazin, who I don't usually play, I think there's a good reason to play him now. Trazin, for 90 points, will give you that My Will Be Done, potentially the cheapest way to get a My Will Be Done, because where well, you don't upgrade the weapon because he's got a half decent weapon as well. Plus he has the ancient collector rule helping us out with CPs for dynastic heirlooms. So with his weapon skill of two plus, I think it's really good for 90 points. You might see him on the table a lot more now. Okay, so troops are next and the immortals have come down in points. I'm a bit surprised to see immortals coming down to be honest, but yeah, 16 points now. So they've only come down one point. Very useful, especially if you are scrambling for... Very useful, especially if you're just taking some troops to fill out the battalion and you're taking five immortals, you know, a cheaper unit, fantastic. The Warriors is slightly disappointing because they haven't moved. They're still 13 points each. I would have liked to have seen at least one point drop on these because fielding a big squad of 20 Warriors, well, that does take up quite a lot of points, but no change there. Right, moving on to Elites and Catan, and the three big Catans have all come down 50 points each. So the Deceiver, 300, the Nightbringer now, 320, and the Shard of the Void Dragon, 300 points. A reduction on these is super to see. I'm really happy with these reductions. I mean, cheaper Catan is always good. However, no change for the Plasma Sites, the Reanimator, the Spiders, or the Crypto Thralls. I think the key one here would have been the Reanimator. I mean, to be fair, points reduction on the Reanimator probably wouldn't have actually solved its problem. It needs better rules. But even so, if it was, let's say, another 20 points cheaper, maybe you could put one in your list a bit more. Uh, but probably not, to be fair. So, no change there. I mean, Canoptic Spiders are pretty cheap anyway. Plasma Sites, I mean, if you use it, fair enough, it's only 15 points. I don't think it would change my mind on whether I'm using one or not. Let's say it came down to 10 points from 15. It would make no difference to me. The Cryptothrolls potentially could have come down in points because, well, they're not as usable as they were, especially with the new missions because they're under a unit of three. So maybe a data slate change where we can have maybe up to five Crypto Thralls in a unit. That would be pretty cool. 
um, or potentially yeah, a points reduction so that we can just take them as a bodyguard for our cryptics. But no change on the crypto thralls. However, death marks are next and they have changed. Death marks have come down three points, so 15 points a miniature now. So 10 death marks is 150. Potentially, if we're taking a small unit, just 75 points now for five death marks. We have discussed death marks quite a lot on the channel where basically they don't really kill that much, but they are usable. So if they're cheaper, they're even more usable. So that has to be a plus point. Now, of course, flayed ones didn't get a reduction. They don't need a reduction. 10 points each is really good price for them. The Hexmark Destroyer, however, did come down. It's come down 10 points. That's really useful, and actually, I must admit, for 65 points now, I'm definitely more encouraged to put them in my list Well, when I get them painted. Next in the Elite slot is Lich Guards, and they've come down 3 points a miniature. 25 points now. 25 points still seems quite expensive. 250 points for a unit of 10. However, you have to look at what they've got with that four plus invulnerable save if you're taking the shield. You know, they've got some good rules. They can benefit from uh, my will be done being core. So a points reduction on them is really good to see. I think that's one we were hoping for. Obviously, we'd always like them to be cheaper, but the fact that they're 25 points now as opposed to 28, that's good to see. No change for Scorpec Destroyers, not a surprise. They're really good for their points at 30 points each. The Transcendent Catan, the other Catan in the book, came down 40 points. And for the points now, 230 points, that Catan is pretty inexpensive to get onto the table. So if you're looking for a cheap Catan, he's definitely worth considering. And I think the last Elite slot is also going to be in this position, the Triarch Stalker, coming down 15 points to 120 points. Your Heat Ray at 5 points and your Twin Heavy Gauss Cannon at 15 points, the same as it was. But 120 points now for this bad boy. That is made me think, hmm, Triumph Stalkers, they might be worth considering now because that's, that's pretty decent. Okay, so next it's Fast Attack, the slots which contain some of our best units in the Codex. And as you can imagine, those units haven't come down in points. So the Canoptic Scarabs staying the same, 15 points. The Wraiths staying the same at 35 points. Ophidian Destroyers staying the same at 30 points. Potentially, maybe they could have come down in points slightly. You might see them on the table a little bit more. However, Tomb Blades have come down in points. And I'm really glad that I ranked Tomb Blades above Ophidian Destroyers in my a fast attack video because I, I struggled between the two. Uh, but Tomb Blades now are definitely above them. They've come down to 20 points uh, from 25 and our Shadow Looms have come down to three points as opposed to five points. So a nice reduction there as well. So Tomb Blades have definitely got better. 25 points now with the gun and 28 points if you're going to put the three plus save on there or the five plus invulnerable save. Also coming down, the last entry in the fast attack choice is the Triarch Praetorians, 22 points now as opposed to 25. Personally, it hasn't changed anything for me for all the same reasons that we've always talked about. Uh, I'm not going to rank Praetorians any better because of this points reduction. A unit of 10, 220 points. I'd spend my points elsewhere. Okay, so on to heavy support now. Now the Annihilation Barge, the Doomstalker and Doomsday Arc haven't dropped in points. However, the Locust Destroyers and Heavy Destroyers have. The Heavy Destroyers coming in at 50 points now as opposed to 55, so five points drop. One of our best heavy support uh, units and the fact that they've come down in points, and of course, that's really good to see. Now the Locust Destroyers have come down five points as well. They're 40 points each. Now the two additional guns have come down in points now as well. Five points each for the Destructor and the Exterminator. However, I think the Gauss Cannon with that minus three AP is still going to be the gun of choice. And now they're only 40 points with that gun. But of course, we are more limited now on CPs going forward, so you're probably not going to be taking two detachments, so you might be limited to just three heavy support choices. You're probably going to be looking at 
the Locust Heavy Destroyers as your choices. However, of course, you could put a Heavy Destroyer in amongst your Destroyers because you can upgrade one Destroyer to a Heavy. That could be a way of getting some Heavies on the table and be able to take the cheaper Locust Destroyers. Either way, to see both of those come down in points is really nice. Okay, dedicated transport. The Ghost Ark has come down to 130 points, so 15 points drop. And of course, in the new uh, way that we play, we can't now deploy an empty Ghost Ark, so just bear that in mind. You have to have something in it, either 10 warriors or maybe a character. But a cheaper Ghost Ark is always useful, so a plus point. Our flyers have also come down in points. Loads of reductions for us. Really, really good. The Doom Scythe coming down 15 points to 165. It's still expensive. If it was just a little cheaper, it would be more playable because that gun on there is really nice, but 165 points, it's quite a lot to spend on it. The Night Scythe came down another 10 points, so now it's 120 points, that Night Scythe getting pretty cheap. Okay, so Lords of War, Monolith. The Monolith has come down again and now it's 300 points. So 320 points if you're taking Death Rays. Not only that, but with the changes to CPs now for the Monolith and Auxiliary Heavy Support Detachments, well maybe the Monolith might actually make it on the table now. 300 points, it's not too bad. Now the obelisk has also come down to 300 points, a 50 points drop on that thing. It's still not good enough, uh, I don't think you'll see it on the table. If anyone's going to spend 300 points on one of those, it's going to be the monolith on the table and not the obelisk. Now the Silent King has come down also 400 points now, he's dropped 20 more points. He dropped obviously in the previous update, so 400 points and we know the Silent King, one of the best options that we've got uh, extra CPs uh, for taking him and all of the buffs that he does, an awesome Lords of War choice. The Tesseract Vault has also come down in points. It's come down a whopping 50 points. It's now 400 points. However, yeah, the Silent King or the Tesseract Vault, the King is going to be the better option for sure. That's where I would spend my points. Still, it's nice to see the vault come down and all of those Lords of War because we, we really need these points reductions. And lastly, for the Codex points reductions are the fortifications. So 100 points now for the Convergence of Dominion, coming down 20 points for that unit. Uh, it still has the inherent rules issues that it's got, but potentially for 100 points, you might be able to squeeze it in your list now if you fancy playing it. Now the Forge Worlds units have also had some points reductions. I'm going to cover those in a different video. My plan is to make a little mini series on all of the Necron Forge Worlds units. So keep your eyes out for that coming to the channel at some point soon. I'm liking these points reductions. It's really good for us. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments box below. And if you want to see my best Necron units videos, Here's the playlist for you to check out, and here's a video all about the new chapter approved changes. Uh -huh.